Let's engage in a political thought exercise by filling out the 2024 Electoral College map based on national head-to-head polling averages between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, adjusting the 2020 election results in every state based on a potential shift in the national mood, as well as recent trends in every state. As always, these thought exercises are purely hypotheticals, and in no way, shape, or form represent official forecasts by Decision Desk HQ. My name is Ryan Guest, Elections Data Fellow here at DDHQ. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel down below for more 2024 election analysis videos. We hope you enjoy this one. As of recording this video on March 22, 2024, former President Donald Trump leads incumbent President Joe Biden by 1% according to the Decision Desk HQ slash The Hill average of 606 polls since January 2023. That's hovering around his narrowest margin of leads since last September, as an increasing number of polls have shown Biden closing the gap following his State of the Union address. Biden has now led in three of the last eight polls added to this average, and is tied with Trump in three others. Needless to say, this represents a stark contrast to what we've been seeing over the last couple of months. Just about a month ago, in fact, Trump had reached his peak lead over Biden at a approximately 2.8%. Poll after poll at the time showed Trump leading Biden nationally. So, while Biden is clearly gaining back some of that ground at the moment, I remain curious to examine what a 2024 electoral college map really would look like in a Trump plus 2.8 environment. After all, Republicans have not won the national popular vote by that wide of a margin since 1988, well before the current electoral college landscape took shape. Now, a Trump plus 2.8% national environment would obviously illustrate a significant pro-Trump shift in the national mood, given that Joe Biden defeated Trump in the 2020 presidential election less than four years ago with a four and a half point lead in the national popular vote. If Trump were to end up winning the national popular vote this November by 2.8%, it would mark a more than seven point swing favoring the Republican candidate and it would be the largest anti-incumbent presidential shift since George H.W. Bush lost re-election to Bill Clinton in 1992. Trump's re-election loss in 2020, by comparison, saw just a two-and-a-half point swing against him, as he went from losing to Hillary Clinton by 2.1% nationally to losing to Biden by 4.5%. Now, with all of this being said, U.S. presidents are not elected via the national popular vote. We know this. We elect presidents based on the Electoral College. Whichever candidate secures the necessary combination of states to receive at least 270 electoral votes gets the keys to the Oval Office. Twice this century has a president won the Electoral College without receiving the most votes nationally, most recently Trump against Clinton in 2016. So with that in mind, national averages are not necessarily the most effective method of analyzing presidential election outcomes. They do, though, serve as strong indicators of shifts in national opinion. That can still tell us a lot about the direction the race may be headed in. In today's video, we are going to fill out a presidential election map by adjusting the 2020 margins in every state based on the projected national shift in popular vote. But rather than simply applying a uniform 7.3 point swing in favor of Trump in every state, which is the difference between Biden's 2020 popular vote margin and this given Trump plus 2.8 polling average lead, we're also going to add in a couple of helpful data points that should paint a more accurate picture of what a national shift of that magnitude would look like. After all, each state is unique. There are countless compounding reasons for why, for example, Florida has shifted so hard to the right over the last few years, while Colorado has shifted strongly towards Democrats over that same time period. Because of this, we are going to adjust the national 7.3 point shift towards Trump by the relative shift of each state between the 2016 and 2020 elections, which you can see here in this column on this spreadsheet that I have created. By relative shift, I mean how the state trended compared to the national shift. Take Nevada, for example. 
Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden both won the silver state by 2.4 percentage points. However, since the national popular vote went from D plus 2.1 in 2016 to D plus 4.5 in 2020, Nevada's relative shift was actually 2.4 points towards Republicans. This means that even though the Democratic candidates won Nevada by the same margin in both 2016 and 2020, the state did become more Republican compared to the rest of the country, as the national vote became more Democratic. Another factor that I am adding into this adjusted result is each state's elasticity scores via 538, which is a measure of how responsive a state is to national trends. A very elastic state is prone to big shifts in national voter preferences, while inelastic states don't move as much with the political winds. For example, the elasticity score for Iowa is 1.13. This means that for every one point the national political environment moves towards a party, the state of Iowa is expected to move 1.13 points towards that party. And in order to work this into our model here, I have adjusted the projected national shift of 7.3% towards Trump in each state by its elasticity score. So as you can see, the shifts in states with higher elasticity scores like New Hampshire and Rhode Island rise to above 9 points, compared to states like Mississippi and Alabama with lower elasticity scores. Ultimately, I have added the relative shift between 2016 and 2020 in every state, and the adjusted national shift between the 2020 popular vote and 2024 polling averages to the 2020 election results in every state, producing the margins in this column here. Negative numbers indicate pro-D margins, as you can tell by the colors, whereas positive numbers are pro-R. To be clear, this is by no means a comprehensive method of election forecasting. There are several other data points that influence election outcomes, but as I have said at the start of this video, this is simply a thought exercise, and one that hopefully sheds some light on some of the trends that we're seeing. Now with all of that data stuff out of the way, Let's actually fill out this 2024 map now based on our results. The rating categories we will be following today are safe, likely, lean, and tilt. These are qualitative categories that we will be assigning to states to visualize the differences between margins. Safe states are above 12%, likely states between 7 to 12%, lean states between 3 to 7%, and tilt states below 3%. Starting with the safe blue states for Joe Biden, down the Pacific Coast, Washington, California, and Hawaii. Up in the Northeast, there is New York, Vermont, Maine's 1st Congressional District, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, D.C., or the District of Columbia. Each of these Biden 2020 states would withstand the strong pro-Trump national shift, remaining in the Democratic column by more than 12 points. On the other side, for Trump, his safe states include Alaska, Utah, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming, North Dakota and South Dakota, Nebraska's statewide contest and its first and third congressional districts, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, yes, Texas, it became Trump plus 12.02 in this scenario, is despite shifting one point in favor of Democrats relative to the nation between 2016 and 2020, its 5.5 point margin in that election would shift 7.5 points towards Trump based on its elasticity score, just enough to place it in the safe Republican column. Over in the South, though, Trump sweeps Missouri. Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, South Carolina, and Florida. The Sunshine State with its 30 electoral votes would become Trump plus 15.5 in this scenario. Remember, it did see the third largest pro-Republican shift in the nation in 2020. Up in the Midwest and Appalachian regions, Iowa, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia. Oh, and then Maine's second district up here in the Northeast, round out the safe Trump states, bringing him all the way up to 219 electoral votes to Biden's 140. That is a much higher floor for Trump than you would otherwise see in most forecasts out there. 
because a Trump plus three national environment would, after all, likely translate to an electoral college landslide, at least by 21st century standards. Considering the advantage that Republicans currently enjoy in the electoral college landscape, according to most analysts out there, Biden would probably need to win the popular vote by at least three points, but more realistically four to win a narrow victory in the electoral college. That should give you an idea as to how devastating a three-point popular vote loss would be for the sitting president. Now let's move on to the likely Biden states. Oregon, Colorado, Illinois, and New Jersey. In this scenario, Biden would win Oregon by 11 points, Colorado by 11.7%, Illinois by 7.4%, and New Jersey by 7.8%. These were all safe Biden states in 2020. As for the likely Trump states, we've got Nevada, Wisconsin, and North Carolina, three critical battlegrounds in 2024. They were each decided by less than three percentage points in 2020. Remember, as we discussed earlier, Nevada shifted 2.4 points towards Republicans between 2016 and 2020, while Wisconsin shifted red by exactly one point relative to the nation, going from Trump plus 0.8 to Biden plus 0.6 a 1.4 point shift towards Biden as the nation shifted four and a half points more Democratic. North Carolina stayed perfectly put. It voted 5.8 points to the right of the nation in both 2016 and 2020. But of course, with the seven point pro-Trump shift nationally that we've seen in the adjusted results, it shoots all the way up to Trump plus 8.3 here. That leaves just nine states left to occupy the lean and tilt categories on this map. Trump is already closing in on 270 electoral votes, with 251 to his name now. Biden trails behind with 191. 96 electoral votes are still up for grabs. Four out of these states remaining will lean towards Biden. New Mexico at D plus 3. Nebraska's second congressional district is D plus 5.3. The Commonwealth of Virginia is D plus 5.8. And then Maine's statewide contest is D plus 4.2. The state of Maine, Virginia, and Nebraska second all became at least two and a half points bluer compared to the rest of the nation in 2020, backing Biden by nine, seven, and ten points in that election, and therefore surviving a strong national Republican swing. On the Trump side, three more pivotal battlegrounds will lean his way. Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Arizona. Biden flipped these 2016 Trump states into his camp in 2020 by 0.3% in Arizona, 2.8% in Michigan, and 1.2% in Pennsylvania, yet they each still voted to the right of the nation at large. Arizona became 1.4 points bluer, but still Biden's 0.3% victory was 4.2% to the right of the national vote. Michigan became a half point bluer, while Pennsylvania became a half point more Republican. 2020 notably marked the first time since 1948 that Pennsylvania voted to the right of the nation in consecutive elections. Now before we get to the tilt states, let's take another status update here looking at the electoral counts. Trump has eclipsed 270 up to 296 electoral votes, Biden has 212. The former Republican president has already flipped Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania by comfortable margins, and he'll add Georgia to that list as it tilts towards Trump by a margin of 2.9%. Georgia voting to the left of all of these other key battlegrounds may come as surprising, given current polling data. But keep in mind the strict data that we are using here. Georgia has shifted three points towards Democrats relative to the nation between 2016 and 2020, from Trump plus 5.1 in 2016 to Biden plus 0.2. Georgia is also the third least elastic state in the country, which means that Trump's 7.3 point national shift decreases to 6.1. On the total opposite end of that spectrum is New Hampshire, which tilts towards Biden. 
New Hampshire is the most elastic state in the country, according to 538. So in spite of its four and a half point Democratic relative shift between 2016 and 2020, going from Clinton plus 0.3 to Biden plus 7.4, it has shifted quite hard towards Trump in this scenario due to the national swing. So is Minnesota, also a tilt Biden state here, and also a state that he won by seven points in 2020 after Clinton came close to losing in 2016. So that completes this thought exercise, visualizing what a Trump plus three national popular vote victory would look like on an electoral college map. So that completes this thought exercise, visualizing what a Trump plus three national popular vote victory would look like on an electoral college map. It's worth noting here that the electoral college count itself, Trump 312, Biden 226, is almost identical to the result of the 2016 presidential election between Trump and Hillary Clinton. The only difference is that Trump flipped the state of Nevada in this scenario. That being said, moving from a Clinton plus two to a Trump plus three scenario represents a pretty substantial shift, yet it only results in Trump netting a gain of just six votes from one state, suggesting that a truly monumental shift on a national scale would be required to see any states beyond the six key swing states flip into the Trump camp. Feel free to let us know in the comments what you thought of this method, and let us know if there are any other scenarios you would like to see us explore in future videos. That is all for this Decision Desk HQ video, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click that like button down below if you did indeed like it, and subscribe to the channel down below if you haven't already. Also check out more content from our channel here, and we'll catch you next time.